Website security is not a beginner topic, and the subject goes very deep, but I think it's important for us to discuss at least one aspect of security at this beginner level, if for no other reason because Rails has this feature turned on by default, and you should understand what it's doing for you. In this movie, we'll be looking at cross-site request forgery and how Rails helps us to prevent it. Cross-site request forgery is often abbreviated as CSRF and sometimes pronounced as CSRF. What is CSRF? Imagine that you log into your bank account via the bank's website. When you're done with your banking, you don't log out, you just close the browser window. You then open up a new window and start surfing around until you visit a page on another website that includes a special image tag. Instead of linking to an actual image, the source of that image is a URL that points to your bank. It's designed to make a request to your bank's website, and the request has been carefully constructed to do bad things if it succeeds. Your browser thinks it's just asking for an image, and it gladly sends along any cookies or session information that your bank's website needs with the request. From your bank's point of view, you're just a currently logged in customer with proper access credentials making another request a few minutes later. So it does what you asked. And the user will never see this image or know what happened in the background. Hence the name cross-site request forgery. It's forging a request to your bank's website. It's a lot like stealing your checkbook and forging a check. But unlike checks, it doesn't just happen with bank websites. It can happen to you. The site hosting this evil image may not even have bad intentions. The image could be in a user post or in a comment on a blog. The evil image can even originate off the web from a spam email. The result is the same. There are many preventative measures that one could take, and your bank probably takes most of them. Of course, requiring user authentication is a basic one, but also regularly logging out users who haven't been active after a short period of time. It's also a good habit to get used to handling GET and POST requests differently. Any request that changes something in the application or the database should always be a POST request. GET request should be read only, and actions that expect POST request should enforce that. They should only respond to POST requests. So for example, you might write a method that was something like this. Unless the request is a POST, redirect to something else and return false. This is decent protection, but POST methods can be faked, especially with AJAX requests. So Rails offers another protection. Rails automatically adds a hidden field to every web form that it displays. The value of the hidden field is a unique token generated by the application and also stored in the user's session file. We'll talk more about sessions later. Then when the form is submitted, Rails knows what token to expect to arrive with it. It assures your application that this is a POST request from the form that your application generated, not coming from some evil link or third-party code pretending to be the same form. Rails does all of this for you automatically because of a line of code in the application controller. Protect from forgery with exception. All of your controllers inherit from application controller, so any code here applies to those other controllers as well. As a result, if someone tries to forge a request, they'll receive an error page as a result. Most times, you'll just leave your CSRF protection running quietly in the background doing its work for you. But if you ever do need to disable it for any reason, and most times, again, you don't want to disable it, you want to leave it there and let it do its work for you. But if you do need to, you can skip it for an entire controller by using skip before action verify authenticity token. And that will exempt the controller from that token verification. Or if you need to do it just on an action by action basis, you can call protect from forgery again, but pass in either accept or only, followed by an array of the actions that either should or should not be protected from forgery. Again, most times you're just going to leave it running and accept the default behavior. It's more advanced than we'll cover here, but I also want to mention that for AJAX and JavaScript requests, you will need to add a CSRF token tag to the head of your HTML page. This addition to your page layout will allow AJAX and JavaScript requests to use the same token forgery protection as the regular HTML post requests do. The beauty of CSRF protection in Rails is that it's built into the framework and it happens automatically for us. So if we don't do anything, it's something that we don't even have to worry about. Rails will just handle it and take care of it for us. But now at least we understand what it is.